All right, Amir, thank you. Great presentation. And now that I think we've kind of set the table, right? We have a scope of what we are all here for. It's only right that the industry itself speaks to you. And you heard Amir say, he was talking about Metaverse. I want to just tell you right now, we have a heavy hitter Metaverse panel coming up later in the run of our show. But ladies and gentlemen, right now, please join me in welcoming Peter Hutton from Meta. Quick introduction for those of you that don't know, Peter Hutton leads sport for Meta worldwide based out of the company's California headquarters, working across Facebook, Instagram, Oculus, WhatsApp, Messenger, and Portal. His 40-year career in sports media includes uh, spells at the C as CEO of the largest sports channels in Asia, the Indian subcontinent, and Europe. His experience also includes senior roles with agencies MP Silva and IMG. We talked to him today from Leeds, England, where his sports career began 40 years ago as a radio commentator. I could have kept going with your LinkedIn profile there, but we didn't do it for you. So welcome, Peter. How are you today? I'm good, and thanks for the generous introduction. It's great to be here, and um, Amir definitely lived up to the hype. We've got a good day coming. Absolutely. Yes, we do. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of people that uh, are talking meta metaverse that, uh, you know, maybe are a little unclear. What is it? What isn't it? So let's start right off the bat. Let's set the table. What is metaverse? Well, I think there's lots of different definitions, but for me, I see it really as an embodied internet. It's uh, instead of looking at a screen, you're really in an experience, getting more from it, more out of the time that you spend. But you've got the option of various levels of immersion. It could be the virtual reality spaces. It could be AR glasses. It could just be 2D spaces like Instagram. Right. But there'll be a continuity of experience through all those spaces. So at the moment, you buy a skin for your avatar in the game. But when you leave the game, you leave that avatar behind. But we see a future where your avatar and its goods, its clothing could be across all of your digital spaces. I think it's important to stress that we're just starting on the journey. It won't just be right. built by us at Meta, but by all sorts of companies and individuals. And it's great to see so many people that are bringing forward so many great ideas as part of the guest list today. Yeah, Peter, you, you hit on something. We're, I'm gonna ask you that, but let me ask that in a second. First, um, I, I need you to explain the connection, okay, between what we know Meta for, Facebook, well, which was now, and now Meta, right, and Instagram, with what you see as the metaverse? Well, for me, I, I see Facebook and Instagram and our messaging services as well as really being building blocks for a metaverse experience because your communities, your friends will come with you on this journey. Mm -hmm. So important that you identify who they are and then you can share that experience with them. And that's really what we're telling organizations who ask how to prepare for the metaverse. We say, get your building blocks right, build those communities, learn from the experiments that are happening all around us, and then the story will evolve. Um, and I think that's really as far as we go. But I love the idea that we can use what we've already built at Facebook, at Instagram, on the messaging services, and then bring that to help the metaverse experience still have a similar story of communities and shared enjoyment. Yeah, so it, it sounds like connectivity is the main goal on a strong and solid foundation and building blocks and, and going from there, right? Uh, wh what more specifically is Meta's pursuit in the metaverse? Well, I think the best example so far is what's happening in VR. So that's where we're really scaling the ecosystem. You know, VR is getting social, multiplayer games are booming. People are seeing how work and how fitness can operate in a VR environment. So a few key facts, and I know Amir loves his data, so we'll give you some data, that so far people have spent more than 18, million, 18 billion, so $1 billion on Quest Store content. $1 billion on Quest Store content. And that's helped developers grow their businesses. More than 120 titles have generated over a million dollars of business. Eight titles have generated over $20 million of business and gross revenue. So those are really strong economic numbers. And then you look at that holiday season that we just went through. And we got to the top of the App Store charts with Oculus for the first time on Christmas Day in the US. And I think that just gives attention to the space. And I love the fact that we've been able to accelerate that conversation. 
You know, it's wild to think about the explosion and the growth that's happening, but we're barely scratching the surface. I mean, there's exponential growth that's, that's still happening and will happen, and we know that. Uh, let's pivot just a little bit here, Peter, and let's talk about for sports specifically, because uh, that's a large part of the audience here that are watching today and taking part. For sports content, can you talk a little bit about what is happening uh, in, in sports in the metaverse and meta, and, and who is really impressing you? I think appropriate enough, I'm sat at the Leeds United football ground here at Ellen Road and, and the Premier League experience that Sky Sports are building is something that I love and I, and I use myself as a, a viewer on a regular basis. So why do I like it so much? So in many ways, it's not technically hugely developed, but it gives me what I want as a fan. So I go into my office environment, I go into the Sky Worlds app, I see a jumbotron hanging down from the stage of the ceiling of the stadium, which shows me the TV experience. And I think it's important that we build on that experience because the TV coverage is great, the commentary is great, the angles that you have are fantastic. But then it offers me another layer of experience above that, which is I can look down, I can see all 22 players, which tactically tells me more about the game. I can use my hands and I can swipe on graphics that I choose to bring on, which therefore informs me more about the game. And if you think about where that can go, you know, that could be fantasy graphics, that could be betting graphics, that could be all sorts of different information. Because I think for me as a fan, if I'm watching a game conventionally, I'm watching it from my living room, but I've got three or four screens open. I'm looking at fantasy, I might be looking at betting, I might be looking at data on the players. I love the idea that the VR experience can give you so much more. It can make it a better way of watching a game. And I think the Sky Sports journey is a good example of someone who's going down that journey. But it's clearly not just Sky that are giving us premium sport already in VR. You look at the NBA who are showing games in the Horizon Venues app at the moment. You look at the Olympics, which was available in the NBC app for the Winter Games that's just finished. So you've got real premium sports offering a different way of seeing themselves in VR already. Loads of work going on, mm -hmm. but I think important for me that you build on that narrative that we've learned to enjoy from television, and then you enhance that experience and give it extra layers of experience. Exactly, and so you, you've taken an experience and you've made it even more interactive, which of course is what fans want. They want to be immersed as much as they can, right? Uh, okay, you hit on something earlier, so let's bring that back up. The main use for Oculus, you mentioned earlier, headsets at the moment. It's mostly gamers, right? As you said, gamers are using it, uh, uh, but there's a crossover in the sports industry as well. Can you talk about the synergy there? Yeah, sure, I think it's a really good fit because again, when you look at what Facebook and Instagram have been about um, for the sports industry, a lot of it is about bringing people into the sport, understanding the stories, you know, getting a sense of what matters about a sport. And you can see that already happening in terms of some of the games that are developing and are popular within Oculus. You know, I'll pick out uh, Golf Plus. Golf Plus is a great game. And I know Rob Shaw that runs our, our business in, in the US around sport. He plays with his brother in Golf Plus and they can go share the experience of playing some of the best courses in the world. But they're there in avatar format, playing the courses, talking to each other as they play, criticizing each other's shots, and it's a great social experience. Yeah. So Golf Plus is a great example of doing something which takes you into an experience you wouldn't be able to get to anywhere. But yeah. you can also see how it works for pro franchises or clubs. So Manchester City, for example, they're using the Resil Player 22 app to improve their players' fitness and reaction times. So you can see a natural sort of uh, cross-pollination of ideas between gaming and the big sports brands. And I think we'll see much more of that as we go on. You know, you might learn to play a sport in an app and then you go out and do it in real life. Yeah, wait, Peter, so you scratched, you touched a little bit, but let's talk more. Because uh, that was actually my next question. And that is how important is the fitness industry with what's happening in Oculus? Just, just go a little bit deeper, because I know there's more than what you just shared. Oh, look, I think if you look at companies like Supernatural, for example, Supernatural, great company, mm -hmm. FitXR, another one, and they're taking the benefits of what you want from a personal trainer, but they're adding more to it. Because if you can imagine, you've got that sense of someone telling you to do the activity, of pushing you, which is clearly what a personal trainer brings to you. 
But then you've also got data about your own performance coming because you're wearing a device at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I think fitness is a great space. Um, there are a couple of issues at the moment. So it's good to know that we're coming out with an active pack shortly, which is a bunch of accessories that really minimize the effect of the sweat on your headset and on your body while you're doing this. Um, so we're learning from our experiences, trying to improve our hardware and, and make it a better experience for uh, someone who's, who's using this for fitness purpose. Okay, Peter, I'm gonna wade into the water here, okay? So just come with me for just a second. But uh, do you have any concerns about Metaverse? Do you hear, what's the criticism? Are there drawbacks? Some people are just naysayers. Some people like to be, you know, antagonist. Uh, what, what do you say to those people? I think, you know, people are right to see the negatives, right? And it's important that we're honest about the negatives and that we try and come up with solutions to the negatives. You know, one thing, for example, which again, I think we've learned from Facebook and Instagram is how do you make it a safe space? You know, how do you make this a place that you want your kids to go into and you're comfortable about what they will go through there? So, you know, great to see that we've now launched personal boundaries, which stops people coming into your personal space. And I think that's one step in the right direction, but we'll clearly need to always do more, always monitor the situation and improve. And I think the second thing is, you know, building good experiences, you know, and that's about the people that are on this um, Zoom call and looking at the best ideas, making sure they reach the right audience, building something that we can all be proud of together. Because again, this is not meta building the metaverse. We're right. just part of the story along with lots of different developers. No, that, and that's a great point. I'm a dad of three. I know every parent out there wants to make sure that what their kids are experiencing is safe. And uh, that's a great, uh, that's great, that recognition there. Uh, Peter, let's talk a little bit about how sports and how sport organizations can sort of monetize. Uh, how can they use the metaverse on their behalf to you know, help the bottom line? We can see lots of different trends emerging. You know, one example that I'll use from this last week was um, what the NFL did around the Super Bowl, which was hugely innovative of them. And, and congratulations to the NFL for leaning in, where they allowed you to dress your avatar in either one of three different outfits, one of which was a sort of generic NFL outfit, one of which was a Bengals outfit, one of which was a Rams outfit. And that at the moment was free, but you could clearly see that becoming a source of revenue as you license your content to dress your avatar. And not just for the teams, but also for the boot makers or for the shirt makers. There's a way there of licensing content through. I think the idea of premium seating is also something that's very interesting. If you could make that VR experience a really premium way of watching the game, then I think you could charge a premium for it. And potentially there's extra income in your rights revenue there if you can build something that's unique and you can carve it out in a way that can be monetized. Um, I think if you look so far at the experiences, we've seen very little sponsor integration in what's going on. But I think there's clearly a story there. So I think there's lots of different financial options that will grow. We're clearly in the position at the moment where we're trying to scale this. But I think the fact that the gaming developers are now building profitable businesses on the existing amount of people who have headsets, I think that's something that we can all take a lot of faith from and say, OK, there is a revenue line here. There is a business here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the, those it's changing. Those things are changing co uh, constantly. Peter, talk a little bit about how uh, how is Meta working with startups? Because we have many people in, that, in this audience today. Uh, are you open to new ideas, to solutions, to products? H how can you work together to bring to bring them to the fore? I think we have to be, you know, and I, and I think it's really important that we get that relationship right. It's very difficult sometimes to put a signpost because there's a huge amount of people within the Meta organization working in this space. And one thing that I would ask of the audience today is if you want me to try and connect the dots, feel free to reach out and let me try and put you with the right people in our organization. Not always possible, but it's always worth a try. And we certainly have an open door policy when it comes to ideas, working with third parties and trying to build a better experience. This is a communal effort to build the metaverse. This is not one company's path. You know, Peter, uh, when I interview people, uh, when I'm in my news role, the last question I almost always ask is, what did I not ask you? 
because you know more about this than it, probably anyone, right? So let me ask you that. What have I not asked you, and what is very important that you want people watching here to know? Go ahead. I think there's, you know, a few things that I'd, I'd say, um, and, you know, I think the main thing is we're starting out on a journey. You know, this is clearly the beginning of a long route. We don't know all the answers. We don't necessarily know where we're finally going to go with this. But I think it's hugely exciting. And I think it's important to share that excitement and to try and open up an ecosystem where you genuinely build things that you can be proud of. You know, I think if there's one thing that Meta has been able to contribute, it's partly by the name change and it's partly by the energy of the company that we've accelerated the conversation about the metaverse. And that's hopefully helping people raise funds and build ideas around the world. The, the one thing that I love about uh, Meta, and I'm genuinely proud of it as a company, is that it's really open and that people share their enthusiasm. And you can see from Mark Zuckerberg and you can see from Andrew Bosworth, who's taking over as CTO, they're hugely passionate about this space. And I think that gives me faith that we will continue to invest in it, looking to build something to be proud of. And I think hopefully we can join that journey with plenty of the people on the call today. Well, Peter, we thank you so much for your time. It was an honor to talk to you all the way from Leeds, England. Uh, we wish you the very best. And again, yeah, Peter, we, we thank you and we invite you to stay, stay with us here uh, as we continue on with our program. Thank you again. Peter Hutton from Meta. Really informative, uh, really forward thinking, thinking about being creative, protecting people who need protection. And, you know, there, there's just so many different so many different uh, factors come into consideration and, and you're clearly doing that. So Peter, again, we, we thank you. Okay.